everyone, Paul SM. Welcome to part two of our AMT 125th Dodge Coronet Super B video build. So we're going to deal with all the chassis today, uh, the running gear, engine, transmission, suspension, etc. Quite a lot of parts in this, so quite a lot of work to get to this stage. Um, but we'll get this out of the way and then we'll come back in part three, deal with our interior, and then in part four, we'll be all done. So let's jump straight in with the build and get cracking. Hey everyone, please subscribe to the channel, click the bell notifications, get notified of our latest videos, give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and leave a comment. I do read and appreciate every comment you guys and girls leave behind. I may not reply to them all, but they are all appreciated. And there's a link in the description of the video that takes you to a big long list of all handy videos and a lot of the products I use in my videos. You now have the chance to support the video content creation by using Patreon or the PayPal me link in the description down below. All the videos always remain free to watch. This is just your chance to help support the videos. As per usual, and all I ever seem to do is to clean up a part. So with the engine, running gear, suspension, etc., there's quite a few parts here as you can see. Um, so it was a good hour or two to clean all these parts up. They weren't too bad to clean up. Everything's got a seam, as always. Um, so using a combination of UMP thinny sponges and thinny sticks. Uh, in case, just going around and removing all the sprue points and uh, seam lines and getting it all cleaned up and ready for primer. So, like I say, quite a lot of parts here. Quite a part-heavy engine. Um, hopefully it's going to look good when it's done. But, like I say, this is one part I don't look forward to. It is very boring, but thankfully we've cut out all the boring parts for you. And uh, here we go, with all the parts cleaned up, and now we're going to mount everything for primer. So I'd like to the uh, chassis under tray. Uh, we're going to put a bit of white tack on with a clip. Everything else is mounted using a combination of crocodile clips, um, toothpicks put through holes, uh, through white tack, and CA glued in place as well. And that way we get a nice secure mount for our primer. Parts don't fall off, and right now, near enough, everything will be primed in black. I think it's just the engine and another couple of parts that are primed in white. So, like I say, we're going to prime most of, most of the parts in uh, black. It's literally these two parts on the right that are going to be white. Um, so we're going to use Mr. Service of 1500 black, thinned about 70% with Mr. Hobby Leveling Thinner, uh, through our 0.35 apex at about 18 psi, put two or three light coats down, build it up, and get a nice primer coat down on the uh, the model. So we're in my brand new spray booth now. We've got a new light. Uh, so I think the lighting is a bit better. It's a bit more uniform. A little bit brighter. So it definitely uh, makes the uh, spraying a bit easier. Because we can see what we're doing fully now. And hope it looks a bit better on camera for you guys out there as well. Uh, like I say, brand new spray booth. Built out of MDF. Brand new light. Uh, and because we now have two cameras. There's a dedicated camera in the spray booth. So filming even just the smallest part is no chore anymore because you don't have to move the cameras around. And uh, hopefully this will add to the uh, production value of the videos and uh, make my life a little bit easier as well. So lightly, a couple of coats around all the parts. Just build up nice and slow. Most of the surface it goes down really well. There's no detrimental effects. You know, it doesn't matter if you're a little bit wet. Uh, but put a lighter coat down first, build it up. Like I say, two or three light coats is usually more than enough uh, as a primer for this. We'll also prime the other two parts I mentioned before. Damper and primed in Tamiya Fine Surface Primer White. Um, left to dry overnight, as have all the black parts. And we're here the next day with an orange mix of paint I mixed some time ago. Um, as the orange colour for these engines. So I cannot remember for the life of me how I mixed it. But there was a few dregs left in the bottle. And I've literally got enough just to do the engine block. And to do the air filter cleaner later on. So, sorry, I can't tell you what the colours are, but it's a red and orange mixed together to give this colour um, of the engines. <laughs> so, take your guess there and mix your own. I know some of the US companies do uh, engine match paints. I would like to get some, so maybe we can at a later date. But for now, I've got this mix, and uh, yes, this will do us for now. As you can see, the old camera is still doing its trick of going in and out of focus. Hopefully, uh, it'll sort itself out. And after a couple of coats of this, um we're done like i say not much paint of this left at all i've got a little tiny bit left which we're going to need later on and we literally just have enough to uh paint the two parts required but it's not bad the orange color i think it's pretty uh pretty close to what it is it looks a bit dark here but when you look at it in a bit on the uh the car itself 
it is a little bit lighter. Um, but yeah, sorry I can't tell you the mix. It's just a couple of oranges or a red and orange together. So the next day now, the Prime has been, well, it is the next day, the Prime has been left to dry overnight. We've got some TS14 gloss black now from Tamiya. Uh, that's been decanted, thinned a little bit with Tamiya Lacquer Thinner with Retarder. And again, 0.35 pex, 18 PSI. And I'm going to put a couple of like coats down, building it up as we are here to a wetter coat at the end. Always remember the TS paint like to go on a little bit wetter near the end. Uh, they self-level better. And you'll find if you don't put them on wet, you might get a powdery effect to the paint. Um, so just remember that when painting them, kind of the opposite of most of the paints you use on cars, but hey, know, know your choices, know how to use them. And again, all the running gear, uh, it cools off the gloss black, whether this is correct or not, I don't know, but I'm just following the instructions and seeing what's what. Like I say, give everything a couple of coats. Again, really user-friendly paints, don't need to worry about putting things on a little bit heavy, it'll go down just fine. We've now got some Tamiya LP61 which is the metallic grey, and this is a great colour for steel exhausts or steel parts, and yeah, colour I use more and more. Pretty thinned in the bottle, thinned about 60% with Tamiya Lacquer Thinner, uh, non-retarder, just a Lacquer Thinner, uh, and we're going to put a few coats of this down on all these parts that need it. Uh, again, really forgiving paint, uh, you don't need to worry about slight overspray, but it does like to go on a little bit thinner than the TS's. So like I say, just build it up, put it to one side. This is with the 0.2mm Apex, 18 psi. My my pressure stays the same for enough every paint now. I just switch airbrushes for a reason. So we've got the chrome parts now. There's loads of these to do, but these are the parts we needed today. We'll deal with the rest of them next time. We've got some Asta cheap thick bleach here, and we popped it in. And I'm just going to speed this clip up. Uh, this is four times speed, and as you magically see, all the chrome disappear off the parts. Now hit and miss some chrome parts. Some will come off dead quick like this. Some can take a day, some will never come off at all. So you'll have to up the game a little bit if you're having trouble. Uh, maybe go to oven cleaner, uh, brake cleaner, things like that, um, and see if you can get it off that way. But for us, a couple of minutes in here, and uh, bang, the chrome is gone. Now, with the chrome gone, it does leave behind a glossy finish, like a lacquer that's on the part. So I've found using Mr. Hobby Leveling Thinner tends to get rid of this clear lacquer. If it doesn't bother you, leave it. But, yeah, sometimes I like to get rid of it. Um, these don't need to be high gloss, um, so yeah, quite happy to get this off. So just put it in with the Mr. Hobby Leveling Thinner, give it a swirl around for a minute or two, and uh, then wipe off the excess uh, thinner, and then we're going to sand all the seams, because even though these parts are chromed, the seams are still there. I, it completely baffles me why people do this, um, so even though it's chrome, you still need to clean it up. Now the exhaust, I didn't like at all. They were like a crimped narrowed effect at the end and a while i guess that is part of the car i didn't want to do that so i made my own so i've got some styrene tube here i'm just um reaming out the end to thin the walls at the end to make it a bit more thinner and i've already cut one to size just a little bit bigger than the kit part and i've got my jlc razor saw and i'm just going to cut this one to size and uh, then we'll paint these chrome and stick them on the exhaust later on. So, obviously, I know it's not true to the car, but hey, it's my car, my choice for what I'm going to do. Uh, I don't like the look of those kit exhausts, so I'm going to make my own. So, cut them out, ream the ends so they're nice and thin. Make sure about they're about the right length. If you need to quickly tidy it up, get a thinny stick, give it a quick clean up. Just check the lens, make sure they're roughly about equal. Clean them off, they're looking good. If it needs a little bit more, this is a reamer. So you can just give it a little bit of a spin. And what it'll do is just thin the end walls of the uh, the exhaust, make it look a little bit more realistic. So these parts now as well. So although I de-chrome this, I am going to kind of chrome um, the alternator dynamo, whatever you want to call it. Uh, to me in the UK, it's an alternator. Um, we are going to chrome them. So uh, same with the exhaust. So we've got some Mr. GX2, Mr. Hobby GX2. Uh, thinned with probably leveling thinner. Uh, I'm just going to put a couple of coats down so we get a nice gloss black finish. We can then leave that overnight and come back the next day and spray some chrome. So, quite a nice painted GX2. Uh, there's no primer gone down, it's gone straight over the bare plastic with this. I find it gives a bit more of a smoother effect. So, just make sure all the plastic's clean and you've got no damage or whatever on from your building of it. So, the next day, we've got Mr. Hobby Super Metallic Chrome. This has been thinned with the Mr. Hobby Rapid Thinner. I think. I think it did. I forget now. 
Hmm. Did I? Did I? Don't know. Did I decide in the chat? Did I? Didn't I? <laughs> I can't remember. So either way, it's a missed hobby thinner. I've got a feeling it was the rapid. Uh, I'm about 95% sure. Um, we've got a 0.2 mil apex, 18 psi, couple of coats of this, and it gives a real nice chrome effect um, over the exhaust. This is the colour we'll use on the windows as well. Uh, I've got lots of chrome paints, but yeah, some of them are enamel, some are a little bit tacky when you touch them. Some are really, uh, the Molotov chrome is fantastic, but it's, it's a very delicate chrome. So yeah, what we're going to use on the rest of the chrome parts, not 100% sure. We'll play that by ear as we go. But definitely on the window surrounds of the car, we'll be using the Mastabi. We've got some LP6 blue now on our suspension struts, on our shock absorbers. Um, the instructions call for blue, so I've gone for blue. That's the way I'm doing it. I'm just going to put a couple of light coats down with this. So this is thinned with the Mastabi, uh, sorry, with the Tamiya lacquer thinner with Retarder. And uh, like I say, just build it up slow. Get a couple of coats down, and there we go. So, wiring up the engine. Um, I decided today to add some plug covers. So looking online, quite a lot of them seem to be red. So I've got some red heat shrink. And I'm just offering it up to have a look. Looks about long enough. Probably a little bit over scale, but hey, who cares? It looks okay. Trim it to length. I've got my heat gun. And we're going to shrink the heat shrink over the part. So as you can see, we've got some wire protruding out the end. So it's not right over the end. We'll shrink this down. We then get our tweezers, bend it into shape at a right angle. Like so. And then we can pop these in place. So we've drilled out all the holes with smaller with a smaller drill bit. I'm just going to go widen them up now with a slightly wider one. And then a little dab of CA glue on this. We can pop it in place. And then um, we can wire up the rest of them. So Obviously, eight cylinders. We've got a distributor cap. We've got uh, Mr. Luke Ward. So a little dab of CA glue. Pop it in the hole. Like I said, they're probably a little bit over scale, but I don't really care, to be honest. Um, I just wanted to try it out. I've done this before, but I thought, let's try it on this. Um, quite a strange setup on this one. The exhaust manifolds, or headers, whatever you want to call them, um, are very tight to the uh, where the sparkle leads will go. So I thought we'll give it a go, see what it looks like, and go from there. So with all those in, they're all in place now. We've left a good length of wire on them all. Uh, I'm just going to drill out where the distributor goes. Like I said, I've got a Luke Ward's resin distributors there as well. There you go, you sit on the bench. A little dab of CA glue. Cut the, uh, the stem to length. And then just pop it in like so and there we go and then to connect up all the cables we're going to cut some very short um, lengths of black heat shrink put that over the top like so put the wire in a little bit of ca glue in there as well hit it with the heat gun and that will hold it all together makes it look a bit better and a bit more realistic so we go a little bit fiddly takes a little bit of time but once you've done it once or twice it gets a bit easier and then finally, because it didn't paint it to begin with, I'm just going to brush paint it in black. So some Vallejo model colour, thinned with a drop or two of water, and uh, a nice bit of careful painting. I'll get this painted up. So just adds a bit of detail. Uh, Luke's resin uh, distributors are really good. Uh, I believe he's got newer ones out, which are even better. So I'll definitely have to try and pick some of those up off Luke. Um, but wiring the engine up, doesn't always call out to do this, um, which is a bit of a shame. But yeah, it looks okay. Adds a bit of detail. Whether it's right, the firing order's wrong, so the engine's not going to start, so I don't know what we're going to do there. Um, but I think it adds a bit of detail, and it's always worth doing. We've got a starter motor here as well, so a little dab, dab of CA glue. And slide that in place. Like so. That's simple now. The instructions for this kit are huge, but they make a nice workbench to work off. Um, yeah, handy at the same time, but they are rather large. You've got the transmission with a dab of CA glue. Really nice fit onto the engine, this. There we go. A sack glued in place. And then all the auxiliary drive belts and what have you with our alternator we painted earlier. So again, a little dab of CA glue. Push that in place. And there we go. 
We're not going to weather this today. We'll do that in the next part. We're just going to let everything dry. And we'll get a Cameo panel line wash on it. Uh, just make it look a little bit better. And then we've got what I'm going to guess would be the intake manifold. On top. So a couple of strategically placed dabs of CA glue. Make sure this is the right way around. Pop it in place like so. And then a couple of dabs on top of the carburetors as well. And there we go. Starting to come alive a little bit now. Nice looking engine. Actually really good. And then I made a bit of a mistake on this air cleaner. It calls for black. And I've looked online. Most of these cars come with an orange one. We've got a little tiny bit of that orange paint left. And I mean a little tiny bit. So we're going to give it a very quick prime in Tamiya White Primer. Just one coat. It's already primed. We just need to get it white to get the colour down. So we don't need to go mad with the primer. Like I say, it's already primed. So... Um, we just want to change this to a white color. So just a quick go over, light mist, um, leave it to dry for an hour or two, and then come back with the very last dregs. And I mean, literally, we ran out just as we finished to paint this orange. So I'm glad to change the color. Um, all the instructions call off a black, and some of them do come in black. They mostly seem to be this color. So I'm glad to change what I did. Right then, so we've got the subframe glued in place under the chassis, just a couple of dabs of CA glue, and now we're going to pop the firewall in, bulkhead, wherever you want to call it. So some CA glue in place, and then I'm going to run a bead along the inside of the back, hit it with some kicker, and that will get that secured in place. We'll just get it in, remove any excess CA glue where you can. If you're quick, it causes no damage at all. If you're not, it'll take all your paint off and make a real mess. And then we get our brake master cylinder in there and our wiper motor as well. Now, there are some wiring details on here. I am absolutely rubbish at painting those. They look terrible when I do them, so I opted to leave them be. And then got the engine sidewalls or the inner, inner wheel arches. So, again, a couple of dabs of uh, Loctite CA glue. There's some nice positive locating points at the back. So, line that up and then line it up on the subframe. Just hold it in place for a minute. Now we do need to paint the inside of these wheel wells black, but we'll do that later on. Same for the side, just offer it up at the back of the bulkhead firewall and then offer the sides up onto the subframe itself. And there we go. Just need a little bit of persuasion to get it in place properly. And then some quite tricky parts at the front. So you've got these steering hub things no brake discs on this car which is a real shame um we've got quite a basic setup for the steering just two arms that locate in the subframe and there's one that goes over the top and locks it in place uh, so they move completely independent of each other but i guess it works in some degree so i get a bit of dab of Siegel on the top grabbed at the frame got to line everything up here a little bit tricky the holes are quite tight, so it might be worth drilling the hole out a little bit, just widen it a touch. But other than that, it goes in place quite easy. So engine, back to this. We've got our exhaust manifolds or headers, depending on the world where you're from. So make sure you get the right side so they are handed. Refer to instructions or your placemat or cutting mat, as I've now called it. And just line them all up, get them in place, like so. And then we can repeat that for the other side as well. There we go. And then we've unmasked our air cleaner. I'm just going to paint the very edges in silver. Model air silver. And then once this is dried, later on we'll come back to add a wash. We'll chuck a bit of a wash in there. And hopefully that will tie it all together a little bit. So this is straight out the bowl. Don't need to thin the model air ones at all. And for a metallic colour, it's very nice actually. It's a very nice colour. Um, that's probably my two main colours I use when building cars. Like I say, just some careful brushwork. And there we go. Like I said, we'll put a wash on that later. Make it look a bit duller and not as in your face. But I'm glad I painted this orange because it definitely does look better. Now we've got the radiator on the radiator support panel, so as we'll call it. There are two locating tabs to uh, 
hold it in place. So it's had a little bit of Sega on there. Hold it in place for a second or two. Took me a while to figure out how to mount this. Couldn't see the locating points at all. They are tiny, um, but they are definitely there. So let's get some Sega on there, get it in place, hold it for a second or two. And there's our radiator in place. And then with some Sega glue on the front, we can get this in place too. Now off camera, I did actually have to cut that lower subframe. Uh, I didn't spot on the instructions till later on. You can see it if you look at the top of the instructions now. It says note carefully cut here and remove. So it's two locating points at the front. I just lined a Tamiya uh, razor saw to that and followed that as a guide. And yeah, we cut it perfect. And then we've got these panels in and everything's lined up pretty well. Battery, I decided to wire the battery as well. So we're going to put a couple of holes in where the terminals would locate. Like so, so using the pin vise. And what I'm going to guess is a point what would that be? 0.6 mil drill bit, I'm going to guess, 0.7 maybe. Uh, drill a couple of holes very carefully on an angle. Like so. Take your time. Don't slip and stab yourself. It hurts. Done it many times in the past. And then we've got some red wire. Exact same diameter we use for the HD lead, spark plug leads. Uh, I'm not sure of the diameter because I've just got a whole load of this stuff. And then the same in black, a little dab of CA glue into the hole, like so. There we go. Then we can trim those to length should we need. And then we grab our Molotow Chrome pen and just very gently touch the actual battery terminals themselves. So it looks like the clamps are there themselves too. And there we go, there's the battery in place on the right hand side of the engine and our air cleaner as well. A couple of dabs of CA glue hold both of them in. With the air cleaner, it's only got one locating point. So when you put it in, yeah, make sure nothing falls out. There we go. When you get it in, make sure you line it up so it sits straight. There we go. Like I say, I'm glad I painted that orange because it looks so much better. Now, a little bit off camera, I'm zoomed in. Obviously, we've got a brand new camera, which you may have noticed. The picture is a little clearer and a little bit brighter, I think. Um, but the positioning needs tweaking. Uh, when I'm zoomed in, I'm a little bit off camera. And it's just something I need to be aware of for future videos. But we're just sticking the exhaust in. So we're getting the rear piece in first. And then the front piece in to the exhaust manifold later on as well. Really simple. You're not really missing much at all. So take your time. Get them all lined up and then we can repeat that for the other side like so and there we go there's our exhaust in place quite surprised this kit for an amt kit i believe it's one of the best ones and it is a bloody good kit it's coming out together well we've got the rear diff and the leaf sprung suspension for the back so refer to instructions to see this which way this is assembled any excess ca glue you can remove like i say if you're quick it doesn't really cause any damage and then getting these in place, a little bit tricky. So my advice here is line it up, get the lower pieces in first that are more towards the front of the car. And then you've got to try and slightly bend the leaf springs as you get the back in and glue it in place. There's a little bit of tension there. So wheels and tires, I've got my RC tire DC tool that somebody sent me a while back. Um, and does a great job of taking the seams off the tires. So... Just going to go around and remove all the seams on the tires. Then we're going to cut out the middle. As you can see, there's a little bit of a cutout in the middle. So you can use a knife or your cutters or whatever you're going to use and go around and gently clean them up. And we had a bit of a calamity with the wheel here. I'll explain it a little bit. But yeah, basically the wheel went missing for an hour and a half. And I found it in the most stupid place you'd believe. Um, but yeah, like I said, we're going to deseam them, get rid of the centers. We've already painted our wheels up. What we've done is we left the kit chrome on. We've painted the centers of the, let's have a think, what are they called? In between the spokes um, with Tamiya, sorry, with Velo model black, model color black. Uh, and then we've, we're have we going to dual coat them later on with some semi-gloss clear for Mr. Hobby. So I'm just test fitting everything in a minute before I commit to clear coat, uh, just to make sure everything fits and it's going to look okay. But yeah, quite fiddly getting these tire centers out, so just take your time. Um, I found using the sprue cutters was the best, quickest way of doing it. So just go around, cut all the uh, the connection points, 
then you can come back in with a knife and clean it up later on. And again, we just put our tire through one side, making sure we've got the right way around. Like I say, if you need to trim it, just get your craft knife and just gently trim away any excess rubber. And there we go. So happy with the tires. We're in the spray booth. We've got the wheels mounted to a lollipop stick, a wooden stick, on some double, well, turned over Tamiya tape. And we've got some Mr. Hobby Super. Let me have a think. Semi gloss clear. This is a spray can, decanted. It's where I finished that BMW M6 in a while back. It's a very, very good semi gloss. I'm just going to give this a couple of light coats, making sure we're getting all the recesses and angles. And it just takes that toy like look off the chrome. They look a lot better. Uh, look a bit more realistic and yeah it makes a big deal a uh, big difference to it and it's definitely worth doing so that dry now they've been dried a couple of hours we glued the wheel halves together because i was having a bit of a nightmare getting them together while they were in um and it's just a case of pushing it all through as one well. quite simple really there we go a little bit of persuasion they will go through and there we go there's one wheel we can repeat that for the other three until all four are done. I'm quite happy with these. They're, they're quite nice wheels, these. And like I say, I did think I lost one for a while, and I was panicking because I couldn't find anything else that even remotely fitted it. Quick test fit. Yeah, no real positive locating to the axles. I guess it is what it is. Um, so I thought, right, I'm going to pop the chassis on the body, and we're going to have a look and see how these wheels fit. And I'm glad I did because they do sit in a little bit and I don't like the look of that. Looking at the standard car, so it looks like the standard car, the wheels do sit in the arches quite a bit. On the different versions, I'm going to guess the Pro Street or whatever they're called, the wheels have a bit more of a more aggressive stance. So just a quick test fit, having a look, engine's looking good against the colour. Um, can't wait to get this colour polished, it's absolutely beautiful. When you pop the wheels in, they do sit in quite a lot. So we'll modify that later and get this look a little bit better. But as you'll see in a second, this wheel is going to fall off and go off the edge of my bench. Any second now. There it goes. So that hit my leg. That rolled up a cushion. Because I have um, a leg support shelf under my leg, under my bench. It went uphill and threw a 15 mil gap in the back of my units. Um, myself and Hannah spent over 40 minutes looking for it. To not find it for me to finally find it in the back of a cupboard so a bit of a nightmare but we got it in the end so the wheel set up much better we would just wind it with a little bit of tube uh i'll show that in the next part and we'll put the six pack decal on the air cleaner and that is us today there we go that's where we're at today um quite a lot of work to get there there's a lot of parts there to use um uh, but it's gone together pretty well um other than the calamity of losing the wheel for an hour and a half which was an absolute nightmare um, the kit's going together really well. Uh, it's pretty well detailed. I've had no real troublesome parts yet. So hopefully this will be a trouble-free build. And uh, we can get this kit. I absolutely love this car. Uh, and get this built. So like I say, we'll be back in part three to do all the interior. Not 100% sure on the interior colour yet. Uh, it's something I'm going to have a think about. But I'm probably going to do part three of the bike next. And get all the frame done and the engine mounted on that. And the swing arm done. Um, but we're back for part three of this very soon after that and uh, then we'll come back for part four and get this finished but yeah i'm very surprised the mt kit really nice parts really nice cleanup good looking engine as well uh, and the small things add a bit of detail wiring everything up um, it does add a bit of depth and detail to it but i'm glad i changed that air cleaner colors to orange because it looks a lot better so there we are not much to chat about today. It's early in the morning. I've been up since about 5 a.m. today. So it's about, I've been out here since 7 a.m. It's 8 o'clock now, which is quite early for me coming out here. But I thought I'd come out Saturday morning. My little boys got swimming in a bit. And I thought I'd come out and get the video done and try and get uploaded a little bit earlier. That way, when I come back, the day is mine and I can make more videos. So there we are. There we are. So yeah, let me know what you think of the video. Leave a comment down below. I do read and appreciate all the comments left. Uh, might not reply to all, but I do read every single one. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think of the running gear. Like I say, I'm surprised by the kit. It's going together really well. I'm just waiting for something to bite me in the arse um, cause a problem. But so far, it's looking good. It's looking really good. I can't wait to get this finished because that purple is absolutely beautiful. It's windy out there. 
Um, so, like I said, we're back with part three of this after the next bike part. Um, and it's going to be too long before we get this finished, to be honest. I think once we get part three done, we'll probably just push through and finish it. Um, I think it'd be quite quick on this one. And then we've got some other projects coming up in the near future, which I'll chat about in a bench update, which we're going to do sometime next week. So, yeah. So, as always, I like support the channel. Uh, there's ways in the description you can do it. There's a Patreon me link, PayPal me link, and buy me a coffee link. Any and all support is greatly appreciated. It's what keeps the channel going, or well, the videos going. Uh, the links for International Scam on the Facebook page and forum are there. UMP Retail, my Paul I Scam Scale Models uh, page is there as well, as well as the Live of the Bench page, which is now Paul ISM. Daily live streams. I'm trying to think of the names. I've changed them all. And we've also got the Off-Air Hangout group as well. Just changed names. Uh, and the group build uh, pages there as well. All the links to these are down below. So you can go and have a look yourself. Uh, and like I say, please leave a comment. Make sure you sub to the channel. Click that bell notification. And give the video a thumbs up or thumbs down. And a question for the day. Let's see. Hmm. What is your usual Saturday routine? What do you normally do for me? It's uh, swimming from a little boy, uh, a trip to Lidl on the way back for some breakfast, um, and then join the hangout with other guys, and then hopefully do a bit of modeling. Uh, that's my usual Saturday morning routine, so let me know yours, and uh, yeah, if you've got any comments or questions, pop them down below. There we are. So enjoy your Saturday. I will catch you all later. Take care. Bye-bye.